Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I own a real land. And uh, I know I'm supposed to change your life in the next 30 minutes, but I want to take just a minute to talk about CT RIA. Um, at Aurelian, we see at least 100 real estate investors and small business owners every single week. And CT RIA has always been some of our best clients. They're always the most knowledgeable about real estate, they're always the most knowledgeable about general business, and they're always the most committed. And we see them all over the spectrum, from brand new businesses to people who have been in business for 30 years. And I wanted to really compliment Linda because of all the groups that send people to Aurelian for funding, CT RIA members are always in the top 5%. So I want to It's been a pleasure to work with Linda. Uh, I've done a lot of webinars with her. This is the first time I got to meet her in person. Yeah. And uh, I'm really happy to be here and flattered that she would invite me to come out and speak. So, um, there's a lot of things that I did in business that helped me. I'll try and tell you three or four of them today. And hopefully, they will help you as much as they helped me. Um, one of the reasons that I named the company Aurelian, has anybody, has anybody ever heard of the name, who Aurelian was? Yeah. Aurelian was the Roman emperor that led the Ro Rome out of the crisis of the third century. Nobody remembers that. <laughs> I remembered it. I thought, well, everybody will remember that. No, nobody does. <laughs> but Aurelian was a, was a guy that led Rome out of uh, disaster. So in 2008, uh, I, I, I lost a lot of money. A lot of my friends lost a lot of money. Uh, I had a partnership with Goldman Sachs and a partnership with Ford Motor Company. We all lost a lot of money. This is what I decided to do about it. I created Aurelian because I believe that small business owners will help get us out of this mess. You guys are proof of it. Um, if the video would have played right, um, more jobs have been created by small real estate investors than anybody else. And more communities have been revitalized by small real estate investors than anybody else. So it's not the big companies that are going to lead us out of this mess. It's you guys in this very same room. So um, how many people made money in real estate last month? Anybody? Oh, great. How many people could make more money if they had more money available? <laughs> oh, you everybody. Good. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Here's something everybody knows. There's, there, there's the five sources of uh, funding. Probably I've talked to a thousand small business owners in, in the last few years. That's how they get it. Savings. Loans from relatives, friends, hard money, and then the last one is from a bank. How many people have gotten money from a bank to do their real estate investing? A couple, a couple. How many people have gotten turned down by banks? Um, financing real estate is not easy. And financing real estate, residential real estate for investment is the toughest of all. And with all of these things right here, there are people out there that will tell you how to do it, and they'll make it seem easy. And I'm here to tell you, I've been doing this for 38 years. I, I built several companies, including a real estate company, and it's not easy. It's not easy. Um, there's things you can do that will help yourself. And there's things that you can do, and hopefully I'll tell you a couple things here that will help. Um, one thing that you have to know is there's risk with every one of these things. Mm -hmm. It may be hidden, but when you borrow money, there's always risk. A lot of it's hidden. Um, I'll tell you, I have uh, a story that I tell about hidden risk. Uh, I'll, I'll be quick. 
Uh, I have three aunts. These, these women are the most beautiful women in the world. They would have given me anything I ever asked for. Um, Bernadette, Agnes, and Elizabeth. My Aunt Bernadette is a Dominican nun. So she would give me the money. But if I borrowed the money off of her and something happened, I just want her and God. And that's just too much pressure for me. My Aunt Agnes is a big time real estate agent. So if I borrowed the money off of her, she'd want to know every single thing about the transaction. If something went bad, I'd have to explain it to her. And I didn't want to be, I would never want to do that. And then my Aunt Elizabeth is a school teacher. She's very smart. She's smart enough to know she knows nothing about real estate. She would call her Aunt Agnes, or her sister Agnes. They'd, they'd start talking. They'd start to worry. Then they'd call my sister Bernadette. They'd pray together. And then I'd just point everybody and God. And just, so... The first thing I want everybody to know is always risk. You just have to understand it. And shifting the risk is not mitigating the risk. I'll show you later on how to mitigate the risk, or at least mitigate part of the risk. But just shifting the risk from one person to the next isn't really going to help you. Because if you have a few investors or people that will let you borrow money, and let you leverage their funds, the first time that deal goes south, you won't ever have them um, to work with again. So the first thing is understand risk. The second thing is financial instruments are just tools. Is a hammer good or bad? Yeah, it's good if you hammer nails, not so good if you hammer your neighbor's head. <laughs> so, same thing with financial tools. Even the things that brought the nation down, credit default swaps, which Goldman Sachs in, uh, invented and misused. Properly used, that was a good tool, but they, didn't, they misused it. So, if you can remember that financial instruments are just tools, they're as good as somebody who's using them. Um, so what are the tools that we have as, as investors to use? Mortgages? Linda, can I have a glass of water? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So the tools we have to work with. Ah, thank you. That's good. Thanks. Um, so, mortgages, loans, credit default swaps, lines of credit, they're just tools. <coughs> the tool that everybody knows is loans. Everybody knows what a loan is. Everybody's got a mortgage here, right? Everybody knows what a mortgage is. So when you go to the bank, the bank's going to, you're going to negotiate about how long you have. How long can you repay it? 15 years, 30 years? They're going to look at your house. Uh, they're going to ask for um, appraisals. Uh, the money's got to use, be used for that specific purpose. Uh, and then the debt will go on your personal credit profile, which most people here will realize that when you carry all that debt on your personal credit profile, your scores are going to go down, and they're going to charge you more for the loans and everything else. But what if you came to me and I said, I'm going to give you a $100,000 loan. And you ask, well, what, how long do you have to repay? And I said, well, don't worry about that. You can repay me the principal whenever you want. Don't worry about that. Just pay me my interest payment every month. Don't worry about the principal. What if you said, what kind of collateral do I need? And I said, don't worry about the collateral. You keep that. I'm good. I don't need it. And then what if uh, you said, well, what if I sell my house? Do I have to pay you back the money? I said, no, 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 you keep that. That's good. I'm good. You just pay me my interest. And what if I said, you know, I'm not going to put that debt on your personal credit because I know that's going to mess you up. So we're just going to keep it over here and we're not going to do anything about it. Would that be pretty good? Who would yeah. want that? Yeah. Who would want that? Yeah. That's the line of credit. Yeah, that's the line of credit. So this is what every expert I've watched them on TV, and none of them get it. I sit in rooms with, with the Goldman Sachs people, with the Morgan Stanley people, with Bank of America, 
and then I watch them on TV, and they don't explain it right. People get afraid of things they don't know. A line of credit is just a loan with better terms. That's all it is. If you could go and negotiate the, the loan that you want, you'd have the same terms as a line of credit. This is what every business owner needs. All the businesses across the country, they have lines of credit. That's how, that's how I buy all my real estate on line of credit. That's how, uh, um, that's how I created Vector, really. Um, Vector was a company I started when I was 23, and we ended up with a, a partnership with Ford Motor Company and manufacturing plants all over the world. But I didn't have any money. I didn't have savings, I didn't have 401ks, and I certainly wasn't going to borrow it from my three aunts. <laughs> so how did I do it? Banks turned me down. This is how I did it. I made my suppliers, I went to my, the six biggest chemical suppliers in the country, said I'll give you all the business that I'll get from GM, Ford, and Chrysler, but I need a line of credit to buy your products. So I created a, a company with these lines of credit and then a, a real estate company with these lines of credit too. So if you understand how to use money, it can help you. And you can use these lines of credit for anything. That's the beauty, beauty of it. A loan, you gotta use it for one thing, like your house or a car. Line of credit, you use it for anything you want. So you can, any business purpose, pay contractors, anything. And here's a couple of questions. Because 38 years ago, I was sitting in seats just like yours. And I always ask, you know, number one, well, how can I get it? And the answer was, you can't. Uh, and then the other question I asked was, well, why would anybody do something so crazy? Well, why would the banks do this? That's right, why wouldn't they? If you have a good underwriting model, if they gave it to people who did not pay them back, they would lose a lot of money. But I've known these guys for 38 years. And what I convinced them of is let's do something special. Let's look at what it really takes to help people. So all we do is we look at their credit reports. Uh, we've got a lot of people in here that uh, I know that we've talked to over the years. Um, all we do is look at their credit report and we make a leap of faith. If you pay your bills on time, personally, with the leap of faith that the banks and I are taking is you're going to pay us back in your business the same way you paid it back in your personal life. So why would the banks do it? Because if you do it right, you're going to, they, they're going to make money. If they do it wrong, they're going to lose money. But we do millions and millions of dollars of these. So one person coming to them and saying, hey, give me a line of credit, that's not going to work too well. But we do millions and millions and millions of dollars of lines of credit. And my clients have become some of the most successful in their industries. And I rolled this product out in 2008, 2009. And we've had two defaults. Of the thousands of people that we've helped, two defaults is both medical issues. So the banks have trusted us. And we've come through. And because of the way we structure these things, because it's not a loan where the sort of damage is just hanging over your head and you've got to pay it back in a certain period of time or else you're going to lose everything, you can live to fight another day. That's, that's what I used to say. I'll, I'll just live to fight another day. And a line of credit helps you do that. Banks understand that. And that's why they let me do this. And this is what I've been able to negotiate for all of our clients, including a lot of the CT REA people that I see here. We get them fifty to one hundred fifty thousand per individual, hundred to three hundred thousand for a husband and wife, and they can use it any way they want. No collateral, no tax returns, no liens. So they've been able to take this and help build their real estate portfolio, and they've done a, a fantastic <coughs> job. Of it. Now, when I set it up, the bank said, well, 
okay, what do you, how do you want to, how do you want to access this? And they said, well, why don't you just take a checkbook? Because that's easy. Everybody writes a checkbook. Well, I didn't want that. Because if you look over here, right here, if we use business <coughs> credit cards to set up my lines of credit, you could possibly get 1% to 5% back on all your purchases. You could possibly get up to 18 months at 0% interest. And I don't have to have a time in business or prior bank relationship. And the last one, subject to review, checkbook lines of credit. Morgan Stanley and, and a lot of the, the people that I've dealt with for, for many, many years, they give me checkbook lines of credit. I don't use them. I use my business credit cards. Because every time something happens, no matter where it is, Bank of America, uh, Chase, if something happens to that bank and they change their underwriting guidelines, they're reviewing my credit line. And I didn't have anything to do with how they invest their money. And most of them, most of them don't do a real good job of it. <laughs> so I use my business credit cards. And um, I use them. I've got four houses under, uh, under construction in Chicago right now. And all the materials are going to be placed on my, my business credit cards. And uh, not only does it help uh, save me money, but it helps me organize things too. <coughs> so the second question was, why would the banks do it? This is, the second question is, how can I get one? The problem is, not everybody can get one. This is not something that you can just walk in off the street and say, hey, I want one. You have to have a good credit profile. And what we found was after the first year, I was turning down probably 70% of the people who came to us. Now, that was 2009. That was a bad year. So we came up with another program. And because we came up with that program, it actually helped us. Uh, we came up with a credit partner program where if you don't qualify directly, if you have a friend, family member, or somebody associated with you, we can get you lines of credit with them as a co-signer. And what happened is instantly people started bringing us multiple people. Um, we had one group uh, bring us, I think, I know they're over a million dollars now, so I think they brought us 10 or 12 people. Uh, I've got several groups like that, that because we introduced the credit partner program, and these lines of credit are stackable, so everybody can get one, whether it's your, your mom, your dad, your spouse, a friend, family member, they all can get lines of credit as long as they qualify. And you can all pool the money. And we have several groups across the country that uh, are in the six, seven, eight hundred thousand, and I think we've got one, uh, one group, I know we have one group that's over a million. So, so, from adversity came something that really, really helped us. Because I didn't want to turn down 70% of the people who came to us. So now most of the people who come to us do take advantage of that program. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good program. Uh, and then the last thing I want you to think about is value. The value is not price. Um, I kind of stole that one from Steve Jobs. <laughs> Steve Jobs never talked about price, he talked about value. So a loan, you have a loan, every time you get it, it's going to cost you 2 to 5% just to get it. You use it once, it's over the way. If you buy 10 homes or 20 homes, the cost is still 2 to 5%. And they got substantial out-of-pocket expenses. What I did is I used my lines of credit. So the cost was mitigated over 10 homes. I actually do more than that. But um, if you do 10 homes, your cost to acquire these is 1.5. If you do 20 homes, your cost is half of that. Plus, you get 0% interest from 6 to 18 months. And there's no out-of-pocket cost. 
when everybody got a loan here, didn't they charge you for appraisals? Uh, didn't they charge you for title work? Didn't they charge you all these little fees that add up? It used to drive me crazy looking at all these little fees. I just use my line of credit now. There's no fees. There's nothing. I get 0% interest. Mine are about 18 months. Uh, the minimum are six months. Um, and I spread it out over 20 homes. So my cost is, is very, very little. Uh, and if you are going to do one home, maybe these lines of credit are not for you. Because we don't, we don't give them to everybody. If you're only going to do one or two homes, it may not be the best thing for you. But if you're going to do 10 homes, if you're serious about real estate investing, as most of the people at CTRIA are, you're going to spread that cost over so many, so many homes, it's going to really get down to about nothing. So that's why I like the lines of credit. We make it very easy to apply. And there's a lot of people that are going to be here all weekend and will help you with it. Because these things are not the easiest things to understand. Uh, but I want you to try and remember three or four things. Uh, one is risk. Remember the risk. And shifting the risk is not good enough. So remember the risk by mitigating the risk. You can have your investors use these lines of credit instead of having them give you their money out of their savings account. Get lines of credit. That's one way to actually mitigate risk. The second thing is, remember, financial instruments are just tools. It's like the hammer. Don't get, don't get afraid of it just because you don't understand what a credit default swap is. Nobody understands that. <laughs> I explain it every single time, nobody understands it. But remember that they're just tools. There's nothing to be afraid of. Um, if you are going to be in business, I would take the time to learn as much about all the tools you can. I wouldn't listen to anybody who came up here and said, that tool is bad, that hammer is bad, lines of credit are bad, this is bad, credit call swaps are bad, because they're not bad. They are tools. If you understand how to use the tool, it'll help you be successful. The third thing I, I, I hope you can remember, lines of credit are just loans with better terms. Banks make money. They make money off of loans. They make money off of lines of credit. But since lines of credit are for business guys, we beat the banks down so we get better rates. If you go for a loan, especially if you're only going for one loan or two loans. The bank is going to make money off you. They will make money off you with the line of credit, but they will make less money because lines of credit are for business people. Business people work with banks. Guys like me work with banks. Guys like me make them give us things that they don't want to give us. 18 months at 0%. No collateral. No time in business. No tax. That's what business guys can get from banks, and that's what you can get with these lines of credit. Uh, and the last thing, and I'll leave you with, and hopefully, Linda, I was right on time. Good. <laughs> think about return on investment. Don't think about price. Remember Steve Jobs. Value means something. And lines of credit, you'll pay more to get it one time. But you only pay one time to get it, and if you use it, 10 houses or 20 houses or 30 houses, that cost pays for itself over and over and over again. And if you have a line of credit, like I just got a call the other day about a house. I haven't seen the house, but my guys tell me it's a great house. We're going to be able to make a decent amount of money on it. I just said buy it. Take it right off my line of credit. Doesn't come out of my, my savings. Doesn't come out of my 401ks. Doesn't come out of my IRAs comes off my line of credit. Once we buy it, fix it up, we'll sell it, I'll pay back my line of credit, and then we'll do it again. So think about value, like Steve Jones. Cool. Awesome. Give him a round of applause here.